Haiku. It's everyone's favorite modern BOS inspired operating system. And today, after a year and a half, we just got the brand new Beta 5. So we're going to do the only reasonable thing and install it on hideous mid 2000s bare metal. It's yellow tab time here on Action Retro, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy reviving e-waste with strange and exotic operating systems, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. If you've never heard of the Haiku operating system, you must be new here. Welcome. Haiku is an alternative operating system that's been around since 2002, basically since the demise of the original and somewhat ill-fated BOS. And although it shares some similarities with Linux, it is not Linux. It's a Unix-like operating system and desktop environment that is totally unique unto itself. And I've been fairly obsessed with it for years. I've installed it on all manner of new and old machines because one of Haiku's biggest benefits, just like the original BOS, is responsiveness. Even for the brand new Beta 5, the minimum system requirements are quite minimum. And hopefully we're going to breathe new life into this incredibly boring mid 2000s low spec hardware that you can probably find in any number of local dumpsters. So this not at all depressing black rectangle is a wonderful example of an Acer uh, Veriton. It purports to have a core i3 of some sort, and I'm sure it had a very nice life at some DMV somewhere. And I did not, in fact, trash pick this. I proudly paid 16 whole American dollars at a Goodwill for this thing. Now, I have not opened this up to see if it has all of its components inside, so I'm sure that's probably a good idea. Apparently, we're not the first people in here because three screws are missing and just one thumb screw here holding this together. Aha! Oh boy, that is dusty, but at least we have some memory, a CPU, and as I suspected, the hard drive has been removed, but that's okay. Whatever was in there was probably terrible. We'll mate this up with our finest Scepter LCD and the most depressing keyboard I can find. And there is no built-in HDMI on the back of this thing, so we will have to go with a bit of a dongle solution. And to top it all off, sit happens mouse pad. And I've written a fresh USB stick with the Beta 5 ISO, although you can also burn it to a CD if you so desire. Oh yeah, bootin' haiku. And just like that, we are in the live environment. Mouse works, display is super smooth. So I'm just gonna go for a full install. And if you've never seen Haiku install before, prepare to be amazed at the world's fastest operating system install. And I'm not gonna speed this up at all. I'm gonna let this install in real time. As you can see, already moving at quite a nice clip. Can you imagine Windows installing this fast or even, dare I say, any Linux distro? I mean, look, we're almost done installing a full system and complete and restart. And here we are booting into our minty fresh install of Haiku. It'll start generating SSH keys. And then, well, here we are, a fully functional Haiku desktop. Let me hook up some speakers. Of course, we have to start with the traditional GL teapot demo. Oh yeah, 60 FPS, not too bad. And if we turn off limit to display refresh rate, we are getting a nice up to 600 FPS. And if we go into about this system, we can indeed see we are running beta five with our quad core i3 at three gigahertz, our just about four gigs of RAM, and we are currently only using 395 megs. Let's see Windows 11 match that. Now, I want to jump straight in and look at some of the cool new stuff in this version of Haiku. We have options for an easy to use dark mode instead of a whole lot of secondary colors in here, which you can still access. We have panel background status bar window tab. And if we change the panel background color, 
it will automatically adjust other things to make a serviceable dark theme. Even the Haiku feather bar up here matches the dark theme. This looks fantastic. Now, for those of you not familiar with the wonders of the Haiku interface and, well, borrowing a lot from the BOS that came before it, well, you can do a lot of really cool things with the layout. By default, we have the tracker bar up in the top right corner here, but you can actually drag this around using the little knobbly areas here to make, uh, well, something that might be a little bit more familiar, like a Mac OS style desk bar, or even pop this down on the bottom here for you Windows nerds. I, of course, kind of like it up in the top here, so I'm gonna put it nice and small right here. We can actually put any number of windows together in tabbed groups. Like here I have a file manager and a web browser together. All I do is hold down the super key and either drag into a group or drag out of a group. Very handy to keep different working groups of Windows and applications together. Now, speaking of software, we do have the Haiku Depot, which is the software repository and installer for Haiku. And I have connected this to Ethernet, so we should be able to just load in all of the available software here. And we have a lot of good stuff right here in the featured packages, including, well, lots of stuff that you might want, like a PDF viewer, Chocolate Doom, Classic Cube, which is always my favorite, and the Falcon web browser, which is an amazing web browser by the KDE team. There is such an incredible amount of software in Haiku these days available right from Haiku Depot. So Falcon web browser is installed, which is based on Chromium, just without all of the Google bits, which means we could do, well, anything we could do in Chrome, really, like watch YouTube videos. And by the way, if you haven't watched this video of me playing a Mac Plus through a guitar pedal, check that out right here, because this sounds pretty awesome. Check that out. Yeah, if you want a better Minecraft experience, there is always Classic Cube, which, of course, runs great on literally anything. Eh, still a little choppy on here. All right, well, safe to say that Haiku runs pretty well on high-end garbage, but what about something a little worse? Do you remember when laptops looked like this? Good Lord. Now I'm gonna swap this hard drive out because it sounds mechanical and not happy. Oh good, IDE. Good thing I have one of these DOS Dude 1 IDE SSDs we can chuck in here. Now, this machine is especially interesting for this test because, well, it's an AMD Athlon 64, one of the very first 64-bit consumer CPUs, and thus, well, technically well under the recommended specifications for Haiku 64-bit. And in fact, this machine is kind of grumpy about booting off of USB. So I've burned a DVD. Look at all of these ports. Oh yeah, it's booting Haiku. Yeah, look at that, booted right into the live environment. Trackpad works. It's the correct resolution. Seems relatively smooth, although boy, this trackpad is pretty terrible. Yeah, that's <laughs> remarkably smooth. All right, we're just gonna do an install. Okay, good, it sees the DOS Lab SSD. And we will give the whole thing over to BOS. All right, let's see how fast this install is. Well, it is noticeably slower, but then again, we are installing off of a DVD instead of USB 2.0 flash, so, eh, pretty impressive. Oh yeah, check it out. Booted right up. Generating our SSH keys. Trackpad does work. All right, does not seem to have Wi-Fi. I don't know if this computer came with Wi-Fi. Never fear, we have cables. Oh yeah, that worked. 
course, we need to go into our appearance and get that nice dark mode back. Oh yeah, look at that. And if we go into about haiku, <laughs> we have our single core AMD Athlon 64 at 1.99 gigahertz. Now we have 767 megs of memory. This originally had 512, so upgrade. We're only using 266 and well, again, this is extremely responsive. Shockingly so. Yeah, look at that pulse showing our one lonely CPU, no cores, no threads, one CPU. All right, let's give Falcon a go. Yeah, really pegging this single core here. <laughs> ah, but here we are. Loaded the start page. I guess let's try Google. 100% on the CPU. And well, the biggest thing about Haiku is that the interface is still extremely responsive no matter what's going on inside of any particular application. Yeah, even typing in here, you would expect to be pretty slow. It's not too bad. Look at this. I am pleasantly surprised at how well Falcon runs on an Athlon 64 with less than one gigabyte of RAM. All right, dare we try YouTube? I mean, we have to. It's tradition, even though it doesn't seem like audio is working. YouTube, of course, being a famously heavy web application, really pegging this CPU at 100%, but really it's trying its darndest to load my homepage. I dare say that like a modern Linux distro running a heavier desktop environment would really struggle on here, probably even under like XFCE. And again, still pretty responsive, even with the CPU pegged straight at 100%. Pretty incredible. Uh, screen brightness, oh, does work. Nice, look at that. It does detect that there should be a battery, although it says no battery. I'm sure this battery that's in there is long dead. Yeah, it's a real shame about audio. Maybe some tinkering in Haiku Depot could find something to get that working. All right, per tradition, GL teapot. Yeah, capped at screen refresh. It does do 60 FPS. Let's take off the cap. And well, touching 200. <laughs> Not too shabby, HP Pavilion. Haiku is such a cool project, and I've been a huge fan for a very long time. And this new Beta 5 release is fantastic. And I think it really goes to show that you can have a lot of fun and get a lot of use out of computers that, well, generally wind up getting thrown right in the garbage. So if you have an old machine lying around, why not give Haiku Beta 5 a try and, well, see what all the fuss is about. But that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more yellow tab shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Free Hours 9, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rock K Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.